everyone, Alessandra here. This is a very exciting week for me because this is the week that my new album comes out. Here it is. Will you stay? Ah. <laughs> and I made a little presentation about the making of the album so you can see a little bit behind the scenes. And before I start that, here's a little excerpt from the liner notes. This is a collection of songs made to aid the alchemy of a broken heart. When you are weary of the world, may these songs provide a little sanctuary. Close your eyes, feel the warmth of your hand over your heart and know you are not alone and you are holding a heart of gold. So without further ado, here is my presentation. The Making of Will You Stay by Alessandra Nicewander. Hey, that's me. Uh, so the album is recorded at uh, at the compound studio in signal hill the compound studio is tucked away and it's like going to a different place you know it's it feels old it feels worn in and there's this cross breeze from the ocean and you can kind of see a little bit of the city when you look out the window and you know this place has been around for a while in long beach and it's rugged you can see um little remnants of people who have been there before you and it feels really alive to be in there and this is the band uh we were playing around long beach a lot at the time that we recorded the album it's been about six years in the making so um this is antoine arvisu lily de la mora archambault matt hill me lono archambault and heather summerhauser so let's ooh, do a little flashback in time it all starts circa around 2015. Chapter one begins with a broken heart. Uh, I was dumped by, uh, you know, my boyfriend at the time. We had been together for a long time and it completely shattered me. And, you know, someone who I thought I would be with forever just kind of left me. And, but, you know, it was the right thing. We had grown apart and, you know, sometimes you never know what is truly a blessing or a curse. And at that time, you know, I didn't know what I was going to do, but, um, you know, I was severely depressed afterwards. And there were the, all these little moments that were like little signs that there was different things to come. And I, I had this moment where I was driving down 7th Street in Long Beach feeling really sorry for myself and I saw this sign where DEX Records now stands and at the time it was this little flower shop and I looked up just glanced up from my car at a red light or something and it said it was all just a dream and I felt like that was a moment where I really woke up and realized that you know what was behind me was behind me and what's gone it's gone and what you do have is the future and new things to open your eyes to and i feel like when someone is gone from your life and leaves a hole in your heart it really opens you up to other things and i went home and i wrote this on my mirror with a chalk marker and i it says get up and freddie mercury this shit," you know and like a tiger leaping through the sky <laughs> I just kind of tried to rebuild my life and uh, I started writing songs. And this is one of the first videos I posted when I wrote a song called I Know Better. And I Know Better is a song about, you know, kind of, you know, that wake up moment. I know better than to watch that door because you ain't coming back home. I know better than to drink too much because I got to drive myself now. I know better than to cry too much because tears just make me weary. and you know, the song goes on and that song really captures a lot of what this chapter was for me. And, you know, eventually that song actually got cut from the album, <laughs> but uh, it really has the spirit of it. Maybe someday I'll release it, but it wasn't quite right after, you know, things grew. And, you know, in the space where there was one relationship, a lot of friendships deepened and grew and, What's this was actually um, the mini group that eventually became the band that recorded on the album. Uh, Lily, who sang on the album, but also Tess Shapiro, who I sang with in the Devels, uh, sang with us at that first show. Um, also not pictured was Patrick Okonski on drums and 
at Lono Archambault on bass. And in this video, we were actually singing a cover of King Crimson's I Talk to the Wind, which top secret, we might be playing at the show on Saturday when we release the album. And another really important friendship was uh, my girl, Heather Summerhauser. She was also going through a broken heart at the time. So we like, you know, had this little Lonely Hearts Club going where she would come over after my open mic or whenever, and we would just talk about our feelings and make music. And <laughs> this was actually one of the first videos we made together of uh, me singing backups on one of her songs. And then what started as these little living room jams became like a full-fledged little indie rock band. And this was at the Clancy's and you'll see Antoine in the back on drums. And in the corner a little bit, you can see um, Lono and Matt, but here we were also, we also played at the Packard. Remember the Packard guys, that was a cool space for a little while. Uh, and like, I feel like, you know, Alessandra got her groove back. You know, I had these really great friends and we were making cool tunes and um, inevitably the next step is let's make a record. And since Antoine was in the band, naturally, we recorded at the Compound Studio. And here's a little video of us making that first recordings. And, you know, I, that guitar I'm playing is actually um, the guitar. I learned how to play guitar on it. Eventually, I realized that I wanted the gentle sounds of the nylon strings on the album. Uh, but as you can see, we're all in a circle playing this music together, which is really wonderful and these are some pictures by Lindsay Ingram that she took at the session with um you know trying to dial it all in and figure it out and you know there is a point uh when we were recording when I realized like wow I wrote some of these songs when I was at my very lowest I went from feeling utterly alone to being surrounded by these really deep and wonderful friendships and I was playing this music and I just felt so loved and so supported and you know music heals and that's really like what it's all about and so uh, there's the lyrics <laughs> and so we started the album uh, at that time with us all playing together you know as in the session and we have Lily and Lono who are two of the most gentle gentle delightful spirited people that you could have the pleasure to have in your life. They have really great music taste. That's why they're DJs and they're gonna DJ at my album release show. And Lono just has this really wonderful sensibility. They're in love. This actually, if you look, uh, if you get the CD, this is actually the picture that's on the disc. Oh, there it is. And um, I feel like their love is something that's really grounding to be around and you know, Lono has this sensibility on the bass. It's got this like slinky bump to it. That's really fun to play with, you know? And Lily has this soft ethereal voice that has the most unique, beautiful texture. And when I first met Lily, we were playing at Viento Iago together and she was in this band called The Year Zero. Um, she's just the best. And then Heather, my gal pal you know we have just been on this musical journey together ever since you know we sing on each other's songs and she has this really powerhouse voice with wonderful technique and she released a new album last week called remember the magic which is an 80s throwback synth pop album that you should totally check out and but back to the album um heather and lily singing together is you know it's really powerful and there's this there's a lot of listening happening because, you know, Lily's a little softer. So singing with Heather makes her sing a little stronger and Heather's a little stronger, but she can like be more delicate and um, a little softer when she sings with Lily. So it creates this really wonderful thing. I'm going to say wonderful a lot because that's what these people are. They're wonderful to me. And you know, when we originally started recording the album, we did a session with Lono and Antoine, which is drums, bass, and me to try to do the core tracks and then add on vocals and guitar and other things later. But we really realized that the vocal arrangements were like such a heart of the album that we redid everything. And we pulled out the drums and 
just had, you know, Lily and Heather, Lono, Matt, and me playing together. So there could be a little more tenderness and the vocals could really actually lead this project, which, you know, you don't typically record the drums later. Um, but in this case we did because these shining vocals need to be heard. And Antoine is just a cool dude. We've known each other for a really long time. I remember going to his studio when I was studying audio engineering at Long Beach City College. And um, he, you know, he he's loves to like hang and share stories and wisdom. And um, he has really, he's a keeper of the space. And he really let me take charge and do my own thing there in a way that like you know wasn't typical of what he does but he was really open to it and we had a lot of heartfelt discussions talking about the directions this album would go and um it was really cool that he let me kind of take charge and do my thing you know and then there's matt he was playing with my my now boyfriend george who's wonderful and amazing and supportive and my life would not be the same without uh, Matt and George were in a band called Janie, which was like this indie rock Americana band. And I just loved that band so much and Matt's songs and the tone of his guitar. And there was something raw about the way that he played guitar that was like, it felt like something that was within myself that I wanted to unleash. And becoming friends with Matt was like permission that I could make that kind of music. You know, I could have like, a fun loud rock guitar on my album and you know after a while we kind of like put the songs to rest for a while it was like an unfinished project for a really long time and all of a sudden you know a year goes by two years goes by a pandemic goes by and all of a sudden it's been like four five six years since we started the recordings and during the pandemic I came back to these songs and at that time, it's like old feelings had rested long enough and it was really time to finish this album and share it with the world, but it still felt like there was something that was missing. It had heart. There were good songs. There were good takes, but there was I wanted to build like this musical, whimsical universe for these songs to live in. So you know, I had met a lot more friends since then and had some old friends to call in. And uh, we did a few pickup sessions, adding some other magical things. And R. Scott, what a classy guy. What a classy guy that R. Scott. He really has this wonderful musical sensibility. He's a great listener. He played piano and Hammond B3 organ with a Leslie speaker on the album. And the album wouldn't be the same without him. Um, he really has this tenderness in the way that he approaches, you know, adding to the songs. And, you know, it felt like he had been there the whole time. And I'm really proud of what he added and to call him a friend and have him on this album. And um, since then, like, he's also released um, a musical based on the Beatles conspiracy theory that Paul is dead, which is delightful. You should check that out. And then he has a new album that just called out called Abstractions, which is this really dreamy, um, uh, what do I call it? Kind of ambient album that I listen to quite frequently when I need to simmer down. So definitely check out his music and compositions too. Slam was another special person that we brought into the album. He played vibraphone and xylophone on the album, and we did a session at Jazz Cats for that. If you listen to Pond of Lilies, you'll actually hear the uh, vibraphone go back and forth like you're, you've are you got this fairies flying around your head. And um, he's a beast, man. I cannot wait to play with him on, on Saturday at the release show. I am so thrilled that he played on my album. And then we have Fernando. Uh, I actually met Fernando at um, Zach Nielsen, Harry Nielsen's son's birthday party a few years ago. And I see this grizzly guy with a bowler hat and I say, we're gonna be friends. And so we met and uh, he started telling me about how he had been um, 
one of the main guitar guys on the Echoes in the Canyon documentary with Jacob Dylan and a lot of other amazing people. And I was like, well, I released a Harry Nilsson tribute album. And he goes, you're the girl with the badass long name. And I was like, that's me. And uh, we totally became friends. I saw that he had a Mellotron pedal and asked him if he would play on my album. And he said, I've got something better. I'm going to order like the actual Mellotron. And so the Mellotron is an instrument that was actually used on uh, a lot of albums in the 60s and 70s. It actually had little cassette samples of different people in the orchestra playing each note for like eight or 11 seconds or something like that. And you hear the Mellotron on Strawberry Fields Forever, on a lot of great albums with the Moody Blues, with King Crimson, and I wanted that sound. Um, because there's um, there's something about the sound of this instrument that like, for me, it just opens my whole heart back up. And when we were mixing, I swear, my number one mix mo note was more Mellotron. <laughs> and that's what we got. And, the last uh, musician that we added to the album was beautiful Joy Shannon. And Joy and I have been friends for a long time. You can see us here at a show at Clancy's. And she also played with the band and the Devels uh, when we won Buskerfest a few years ago. And so here we are. That's everyone that was on the album. And now, now we have an album. Now we have an album and a high five. <laughs> And um, so a little bit more, let me stop the screen share here. Uh, so that's it, you know, it's gonna be, it's available on CD. There's a little fun moment in the CD where if you open it up, it's like, there's this beautiful picture of Lily and Aaron holding hands. You know, will you stay? It's about those relationships, but it's also about your inner demons. So we have this fun picture too, which I think is great. Um, it's got seven songs on it. The, then there's also a cassette which is green and I think this is just the coolest and there's a song uh there's a bonus song on the cassette which isn't on the cd or the digital downloads which is a cover of cakes love you madly and um we're doing a release show Saturday June 18th at Rancho Los Cerritos I want it to be a dreamy garden experience where you hear the full sounds of the album with the Mellotron with the vibraphone with the lush harmonies in this green, beautiful environment. And uh, tickets are on my, um, on the Eventbrite page, but you can find in my Instagram bio in the, um, on my website, I'm putting it out there pretty hard. So you should be able to find it. If not, holler at me. And, um, or if you're not, if you don't live close or aren't available, the album will also be available on Bandcamp. Or if you live locally, just, holler at me I can make a delivery um so so that's it um thank you for listening and hearing a little bit about this album take care and rock on <laughs>